I'm, I guess I'm going to start with a, a couple, well, first of all, my name is Andy Dorr. It's pronounced like the door, and <laughs> just straighten that out. Um, but I, I've been asked to give a, just a really kind of brief overview of some photography basics. Now, I imagine many of you already know a lot of these things. I, you know, I, I just don't know, and, but again, that, that's kind of my first disclaimer. Um, <laughs> The other disclaimer is that I'm not a professional photographer. Um, I take pictures for AS, and I made myself available to do that because I enjoy it. And as with many of these kinds of things, you know, all of a sudden you're that person. You're the person with the camera, right? And that really, it's kind of an important part of, of taking pictures in a way. And in that context, I want to start out, I'm starting out with this particular image because I, I wanted to say something very briefly about intentionality. And specifically, when I take pictures of people, my intention is to make them look good. Okay? I, I want to flatter people. And I think it's kind of important to kind of keep that, that in mind. Uh, as we all know, it's really easy to make people look lousy. <laughs> you know, it is. I mean, take a picture of people t having dinner and, you know, forget it. You can, you can embarrass everybody around the table, right? So that, I think, is kind of an important thing. We all do that in our work because we're working with students, we're working with colleagues. You know, we come from that, you know, that hard place, that good place when we take these pictures. And that's why I chose this picture. This young man, this is from the Pardal Carnival, which I love to photograph. It'll be happening in about a month. Pardal becomes a carnival with, you know, carnival rides and all sorts of stuff going on. And the students put this on. AS puts this on. And the young man, I don't know either of these, these students, but he's, you know, he's, he's just totally into what he's doing. And he's clearly, he is trying to, you know, he's painting her face. He's going to make her look a little more beautiful. He's, 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 he's doing that. At the same time, from her side, she's trusting him, right? There's an element of trust there. She is saying, yeah, you're not going to, you know, paint weird stuff on my face. You're going to do this, you know, you're going to do a nice job. And I think this kind of sums that up. It also sums the fact up that we have wonderful subjects to photograph, right? Working at a university, this is just great. Now, okay, so now you go at this with all the best of intentions, right? Um, your intentionality is good, you're coming from your heart, everything is great. This is, um, I was you know, asked to take photographs for the Student Affairs Student Staff Divisional Meeting of student staff. So, you know, I go out, yep, you know, I grab students that work in AS publications and let's take some nice pictures. And I like, you know, I like the background. I like all these shapes in the background. I like the way the wind caught her hair and kind of frames her face. That was a happy accident. There's a lot to like, but, you know, as the caption tells you, there's something going on with her head. She's got a tree growing out of her head. <laughs> well, this is something that, you know, you can't use in a brochure. You really can't use in a professional way. Unfortunately, unless you crop it really close, it's kind of an unfortunate thing. I didn't even notice that. Okay, I photographed three students. I posed them all in the same place. They all have trees growing out of their heads. Um, if this had been an art piece about, you know, woman in nature or something, this might have, you know, made an artistic statement, but that's not what it's about. So this kind of thing happens. Um, the other thing is photo bombs. We all know about that. Things in the image that you don't expect. I had a student um, come into my office uh, just this week, and he had the F word, like in really large letters on his t-shirt. If I hadn't noticed that on her shirt, something like that, or something inappropriate, you know, bad things can happen. And then I want to just quickly say something about the two-thirds rule. This image doesn't really do, do this adequately, but you generally, it, it, it works better if the person, the main focus is about two-thirds of the way in the image, not right in the center. It's just something our head does. It's called the golden mean. It was discovered a long time ago. Um, Dan Brown, I think, talks about it a lot in, in, what is it, the Da Vinci Code, this whole thing. It seems to be something that's maybe even written into our DA, DNA. Um, so anyway, so now, you know, we've, we've, we're going to try to get rid of, of uh, trees in people's heads. Uh, well, the other thing, you know, I'm sorry, I, I, I also wanted to say, it, the way I've posed her, and this is because I'm not a professional photographer. She's just kind of standing there right in the middle, right? That works. It's okay. She looks, you know, she's comfortable and all that. But let's see what happens when a professional photographer like Dave Palmer takes photographs of students and sends them to me. Um, the one on the left is his, and here he's Pose this student. She's kind of looking over the sh her shoulder. 
hey, wow, what a concept. That's actually something you can ask people to do. <laughs> you know, pose in particular ways. Also, I have to say the lighting is wonderful, the way the light catches her hair. I mean, this is intentional in every sense of the word. Um, and then another really important thing for graphic designers, as Carrie has informed me, is you might notice how flat the light is. The light across her face, I don't know how Dave did that, if he did that with reflectors or light, you know, lights or something, or maybe in post-production, but you know, the light is very flat. You don't want really dark shadows. It, it it's, you know, can be a bad thing. And this fellow is also kind of posed, and here he is kind of two-thirds of the way over, and he's kind of looking back, and this captures something about himself. It's okay to ask people to pose. <laughs> You know, in fact, I think when you do that, you kind of let them know, hey, you know, I have, I have an idea, I've, I've thought about this. Um, people relax. When you kind of take over, when you kind of, it helps them to relax. If, if they, and you kind of also are telling them, hey, I know what I'm doing, okay? I may have some, some idea of what I'm doing. Now, just three weeks ago, I discovered through a lynda.com video about taking um, high school portraits. I thought this might be kind of interesting, and it actually it really kind of was. You can actually, there's, believe it or not, there are posing guides that you can find online. It's just a whole bunch of line drawings of people posed in different ways and you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, and there are apps for that also. At the end, I'll have a, some websites. There's an app you can get, and you can just kind of go, okay, you know, how, how's this going to work? Interestingly, it's divided between posing women and posing men, and you could probably you know, write a dissertation on that, but that's a, that's a whole, nother, whole nother thing. So now, another thing you might want to give, give some thought to when you're doing this is framing, okay? On the left, whenever I look at this image, I, you know, I, I'm happy. <laughs> you know, I don't know where this came from. I didn't take this picture, but this is just a lovely frame. Whoever came up with this idea, and yeah, their heads are kind of sticking out the top, and you know, it's not a professional photograph, so to speak. But still, if you can find something that'll do that in your environment, in your office, or wherever you are, um, you know, feel free to do that. Now, the other thing, this is also coming from Carrie, some of her um, things that get sent to her. Well, wait a minute, what about the background? Um, yeah, there's a fan up there. That doesn't really work you know, in a brochure. If you're gonna do something for a brochure on the website, and then there's a sign, and there's all this stuff. And as a photographer, of course, you can, you can fix that. You can do something about that. You can move things around, get them out of the way, you know, however you do that. Um, if this clock is right, I'm going to have plenty of time, which is a nice thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, another thing you can do is if you're just you know, out in the landscape or even in your office or wherever you are, think about kind of framing things, things that you might use. In this case, I happen to notice this is the arches, you know, down in Stork Plaza. And this gives you this very nice arch. And there's even a little bit of the, you know, the thing there, the, uh, the actual arch there. But the whole thing, it kind of frames this. It brings these people. It kind of creates a group. And there are these kind of framing elements. This time I framed this with a kind of shadow and light. Uh, and kind of just be aware of that. I'm sure many of you already, you know, kind of do this. But you start seeing that stuff when you look for it is kind of what it comes down to. And you're in good company, okay, when you do this. <laughs> this is the great Renaissance artist Raphael. I bet you everybody in this room has seen this picture in an art history class or at some point in their life. This is the famous Stanza della Segnatura, the School of Athens. And this is like framing to the nth degree in a conventional way. Yes, he wants you to focus totally on these two guys. This is, what is it, Aristotle and Plato, you know, the great philosophers that are at the, you know, at the center of all this. Um, as, a, as an art historian, which I, I actually managed to write a PhD in art history at one point, I didn't say that, I've looked at a lot of images. Um, this is totally manipulative in a way. And interestingly, this is right in the center of the Vatican, it's also totally pagan. And that's kind of a wonderful thing about the Renaissance church. Um, but you can see, there's all these framing elements, and if you take the whole perspective scheme, it all ends up like right here. Okay, so it's just totally, you know, bringing all that, that in. Now, we can get a little more creative in our framing and the way we pose people. Um, I think you can see on the left, this was a group, this is the Commission on Disability 
uh, Equality, so it's, it's an AS group, and they wanted me to take a group photo. Word got out that I take pictures, so um, they asked me to take a picture, and I. The first thing I did is I scouted around my office. I actually went out and I went, God, you know, are there places? And I have to say, Dave, I have you to thank for this also. Because of some of the pictures that he sent me, he's taken his students and he poses them in various ways. And you know, what a, what a great idea. <coughs> so you can do that. Do a little scouting trip. See if there's anything that lends itself to kind of frame things maybe a little bit differently. But I also started with kind of a more conventional picture. I scouted out this wall and I said, yeah, this is a good color, it's good background, good lighting, and you know, let, let's start with that. And, and you know, yeah, okay, they're, they're, you know, they're on board for that. Now, another thing I should point out, and again, Carrie, thank you for this. <laughs> Sometimes Carrie gets pictures and other graphic designers get pictures where like maybe a couple of the people are like in a different frame. You know, they might be, the wall might end, and all of a sudden there's these two people out here outside the wall. It's really much better when everybody is in, you know, in the particular frame, the light, the background, whatever it is. Well, the other thing I, I scouted out and noticed when I was um, out and about is that we have this wonderful sculpture out in front of my office. And uh, I'm not suggesting that we do this too often. <laughs> and I, I'm glad nobody came by. We might have all gotten arrested doing this. But <laughs> I happen to know enough about metal sculpture that generally it's, it's welded. It's pretty sturdy stuff, so you, you can be OK with it. And this is kind of an odd composition. Everybody down here, and then she's up here. Well, she really wanted to climb up there. So OK, you know, we <laughs> took this picture. But ideally, you'd bring people in closer. Okay, I think this is the biggest mistake that people or, or, or thing that the people often do is when you take pictures, you don't get in close enough. You know, either by just focusing the lens is better than, you know, getting right in people's faces. That makes, you know, it makes people nervous. But get in close. And then if you're not close enough in the, in the picture you took, you can generally, if you don't have to crop too much, you can crop it in even tighter. Thank you. <laughs> I want to look sharp in this film. You guys, you know. <laughs> now, the other thing that this does, you know, for one, it's, it's just kind of fun. You can see they've all kind of loosened up. They've come on board now. They're, they're kind of ready to, you know, to play with this. But the other thing is that everybody's eye level is a little bit different. They're all not some, let's say, like some sort of a, you know, a lineup, um, that, that kind of a lineup. It's just a, it just gives it kind of a more interesting um, feel to it. Now, if I was to do this over again, I would do something to get light on these folks in the background, okay? And you can do that ref with reflectors, you can do that with lights. This was just a, you know, kind of a quick photo shoot and it was just me. But you can even hand -held hold these things. Reflectors are not that expensive. That's one way to, to counter something like that. And you have so many pictures available for you to check out. <laughs> okay, good, yes. By the way, on that score, Media Center at AS also has equipment for students to check out. And they can check it out for free. Um, and we also have post-production computers. We have four computers with, with um, software on them. So uh, you can definitely send them by. Um, it is a good idea to learn a little bit of Photoshop. You know, you don't have to learn every detail. It's a hugely complicated um, program, as many of you know who have tried to learn this thing. But um, I can tell you that um, some birds found this structure, <laughs> either to sit on or for target practice. And just saying that that got photoshopped out because that you know that doesn't look so good. So you know just you know, those kind of basic things. Those are pretty easy. <laughs> I well, you know, one. now many of you you all work with students, so you do this as a matter of course. You're you're good at hurting students and telling them what to do and you know things you you know get to that point in the event where well like this event here where everybody's partying in the back of the room and all of a sudden it's start to you know time to start the show. In this case, these are the students that actually plan um, part of the carnival. That plan the carnival. This is the end of the carnival. They're done pretty much, but they're they're cleaning up. They're all over the place. But there comes a point, for one thing, I wanted to go home, but the other thing, because I've been there the better part of the day, but the other thing is, you know, there's a point where you've got to enlist people, and you've got to kind of take charge of it and say, hey, let's take a picture, let's get this group photo done. 
Because the next thing you know, half the people have wandered off, they've gone home, they live in IV, and you've, you know, then you've lost your opportunity. So there's a point where you do that, and you enlist a couple of these people there, but most of them are kind of leader types. They'll go out, okay, here we go, we're gonna do this thing, and again, they will, you know, they'll work with you. But you do kind of have to, and again, when you ask people to pose, when you do that whole process, they actually really appreciate it, especially the students. I've, I've been, I'm totally amazed by how much they like to be photographed. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, I'm kind of shy myself, and I don't want to intrude, and da-da-da, but they're like, no, no, we're right here, you know, here, yeah, take, take, no. Every once in a while, you will meet somebody who says, no, I really, I don't like being photographed, and of course, you need to, you know, be mindful of that. Now, here again, we can come in a little closer, okay? And the other thing I've done here, I don't know if you really, it, it's, it's subtle, especially if you're tall, you're always kind of taking pictures down at people, and you want to kind of think about that. Um, in this case, I think I, I must have crouched down a little bit to get right down there in with them. And that just kind of makes the whole thing more intimate. It brings them all together. And of course, by this time, they, you know, the event's done, and they're, they're in a good mood, all of them. The other thing I sometimes do, maybe, maybe too often, is you might notice that the camera, I'm holding it a little crooked. That sometimes adds a little bump. You know, it adds a little bit of energy to something. Uh, here they're kind of spilling out. Now again, if I was to do that, maybe it's a little too crooked. I could, you, know, you, you, can, you can work with that in, in iPhoto or whatever, whatever suits you. Okay, the button, aperture, shutter speed, depth of field. This is mostly about depth of field. This is, I'm not going to go into the details of depth of field because it's, it's kind of complicated, but the idea of this, and again, I don't know how many of you are photographers and you, you know all this, but depth of field has to do with, with which part of the image is which part of the image is, is clear. And you can see this is actually kind of backwards. Usually when you take a picture, it's the people in the foreground that are real clear, and the people in the background are, are kind of faded out. And that's a function of the aperture, of how big, how big the opening is that the, that the shutter opens, and the length of the lens. And you can kind of manipulate that. And that's something you, need, you, know, you kind of need to learn. At the same time, this, the, this must have been a long lens, because this is all the way from AS all the way to North Hall. It's that whole, the whole arbor, everything is collapsed into this image, and the, the, the lens did this. Now, one thing that I do, and it's kind of a, it's a workaround, if you really know what you're doing, you just, you know, you set this up, you know, the aperture and, and shutter speed so you, you get the piece clear that you want. What I do is I will focus, and you have those little focusing things in your camera, I will, and, and again, the button. The button on most cameras, don't push it all the way down right away, right? You push it just about halfway, and you'll feel this little stop. You must do this, because it's at that point that the camera does all, all its calculations. And if you, if you push too fast, it defeats that, and you're going to get blurry pictures. You're get, that's why sometimes your, your pictures are blurry. So you do that, and you just point at whatever you're trying to get clear, and then take the picture. I could have done that with these two. I could have focused on them, done that half thing, and probably gotten them into focus, and then moved the camera and pushed it the rest of the way, and I would have gotten the shot. Again, you know, this, this works most times. It, sometimes cameras, you know, are fussy. Um, were you telling me I need to... Oh, I do. Okay. Ooh, okay. Um, looking at the clock here, but... Um, okay, so... Collages. There are collage programs. And this is something I recently discovered. This is really great. You get a lot of bang for the buck, right? You get a lot of pictures all in one thing. And I mean, obviously, your graphic designer can do this. But this is a nice thing. This is totally great. I also wanted to use this to say something about permissions. This was Queer Wedding this year. And obviously, there are situations where you really have to ask, do you want to be photographed? Can I photograph people at will? Having said that, and I maybe shouldn't say this, <laughs> They're in a public space. They have no expectation of privacy. And basically, as far as the law is concerned, you can take pictures of anybody in that kind of a situation. And it's stood up in court, even with children sometimes. But, of course, being responsible, working for the university, ask. If you think there's any ambiguity there, ask. You know, for example, you know, I'm glad Michael Young... <laughs> I wanted to make this point, okay, if I was to use this in a different context, I would ask, and I even asked about this. I did ask, is it okay if I use this image? This got sent to me many years ago for a, for a slideshow that I made, okay? 
But obviously, this is the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, and you know, you're not going to... Um, point of view, color, temperature, these are things that you can play with, you know, if you're taking pictures of architecture. And then adding movement. You know, here these folks are, you know, kind of blurry, but it's kind of a happy accident, and it works. It kind of gives it a little bit more life, you know, something like that. And then, um, final technical thing, background and text. If somebody, if your graphic designer needs something that they're going to run text over, don't give them a completely complicated background. Don't put it, you know, have a Persian carpet up there. Have something that's nice and clear. On the side of the graphic designer, they need to understand how to use texts. Okay, graphic designers are artists, but they're first and foremost, they're communicators. And if you're working with a graphic designer, it's perfectly okay to say, hey, I can't read that. Why is that in five point type that I, you know, I go through this because I'm a DJ and I look at CD covers and I, it's, you know, brown writing on a brown background in five point font. <laughs> Makes me crazy. So be careful of that, you know, and give space. Finally, to find the curve of gold, lots of pictures, whatever. Blah, 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 um, I, whenever I look at this picture, I think of a poem by Sarah Teasdale. It's called Barter. And she talks about music as a, as a curve of gold. And that really is kind of what you're after. Whenever you're taking pictures, if you can find that moment, if you can find that, that beauty, that's kind of what, you, that's what I'm after, at least. And it's a lovely poem. I highly recommend it. The other thing I want to say is I took this picture with a little A80. This was a early generation Canon little handheld four megapixel camera, OK? You've got cell phones that are more powerful than this camera was, OK? <laughs> I also, of course, cropped it down because I needed to, you know, to make, make this thing work. But just keep taking pictures. Take as many pictures as you can. And especially if you're an event, one thing I notice, I take a lot more pictures than everybody because that's what I'm there for. I mean, you know, get into it, you know, enjoy it. Um, can I take any questions or anything? Does anybody want anything specific? Do I have to? Well, Josh, you've got, yeah. Anyway, these are the websites, and those will go up. You know, this is for Linda. Linda.com is the most important one. There's a posing app, and then there's Photor does collages. That's one source for that. <laughs>